What's in the box? Not till you give me the What's gun. in the fucking box? <laughs> Digital gramophone makes no sense. All right, let's do the vinyl boxes. Um, I'll try and get through those a little quicker and show these off a little better. In no particular order. First one is uh, the Mark Lanigan um, One Way Street Box. This was all of the albums that were released on Sub Pop. It's gorgeous, um, kind of faux leather exterior and this was on top because it's the last one i listened to but that's uh that's i'll take care of you and here the rest um, the winding sheet which was the first one the debut whiskey for the holy ghost my personal favorite describes midnight field songs which is another really good one one of the ones we did with mike johnson but yeah mark lanagan uh one way street sub pop albums you're not gonna um get a book on mark lonigan because he's not gonna let you know much about him himself um although he's been in more interviews recently so the bootleg series uh one through three volumes one through three about dylan um Never had this on CD, um, so when it was re-released on vinyl, I was all over it. Um, really cool book, lit that it comes with. Five LP set. One three three is a must, must, must have uh, for Dylan fans. All right, this one is kind of hard to show, um, but it's the Tom Petty uh, American Treasure Box. I got this for myself as a Christmas present, and I believe the year it came out. Six records that are bound in this book, and then you see the, um, the sleeves that they're in with those reprise, those cool kind of custom reprise labels. But yeah. And this is, um, and it's got that in the back, um, which has a book with, you know, photos and write-ups and stuff. Um, yeah. Tom Petty American Treasure Box, which is probably going to drive a lot of people crazy, but, um, you know, I could honestly, I'd honestly be happy with this album, with this box, Wildflowers, Damn the Torpedoes, and then just the basic greatest hits, and then I'd be good with Tom Petty. I don't need any of the other stuff. I don't know. I am a fan of the She's the One soundtrack, which a lot of people under appreciate. Yeah, we're just getting random here. Uh, Sufjan Stevens' uh, Christmas uh, Songs for Christmas, uh, Volumes 1 through 5. Oh, that reminds me. I, I have the CD, I have a CD set of the other Christmas songs, and I don't know where that is, but yeah, that's another box that I have. It's this great picture of Sufian and his fake family. Yeah, it's a, uh, well, I said volumes one through five. It's a five disc set. Here's volume five. I love the artwork for Sufi and Steven's stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then, yeah. Comes in handy for Halloween.
I've shown this before because it is artist spotlight on this guy. This is uh, his golden messenger uh, devotion. Songs about rivers and spirits and children. This is um, all of the albums that he had released um, on earlier imprints uh, like Bad Debt, Poor Moon, and Haw. All of those albums were released on earlier labels, um, Paradise Bachelors, and I um, can't remember what Bad Debt was initially released on. Um, and then it has this uh, bonus disc, Virgo Fool, with uh, B-sides and rarities, Merge Records, and it was, I think, 2,200 copies of this. So it's still available. I saw when I saw him live, he had some still. It's a really cool box. This is the uh, infamous live Jeff Buckley album uh, from early in his career um, that was released on Record Store Day. Was it a couple years ago? It's numbered. It's number four seventeen. See that? Huge Jeff Buckley fan. It's a uh, four disc set. Really well done. Sounds really good. It's Columbia Legacy uh, release. This is Truck Driver Gladiator Mule. This is the Nico Case box set. That came out a few years back. I bought this for my wife for Christmas. Uh, as everybody knows, when you buy vinyl for your... Most of us, when you buy vinyl for your significant other, it's also a present for yourself. These are all the studio albums um, that came out. I like that little write-up. the inside flap there. Uh, these were all the studio albums that had come out up to this point. She was about to release um, her most recent album. Here's the little book on the inside. It's mostly photos. The type of photos that you would find on Instagram these days, but at the time they were taken, uh, there was no Instagram, so. Uh, there's a couple of write-ups in here, but nothing too extensive. Yeah, every major, it came with a slip mat. Every major uh, studio release, some of them I haven't even opened yet because I, um, I, I had these already on CD or um, a couple of them I already had on vinyl and I traded them in when I got this. Yeah, so there's Nico Kaiser and Boyfriends, the Virginian. It's the first one, I haven't even cracked that one open yet. This was the first one I cracked open because it's one of my favorites. Nico Case and her boyfriends, furnished from Lullaby. Um, Canadian Amp, oh, Blacklisted, uh, The Tigers Have Spoken, this was the live EP, Fox Confessor Brings a Flood, that's my favorite. Middle Cyclone, excellent, excellent album, and The Worse Things Get, The Harder I Fight, The Harder I Fight, 
The More I Love You. Classic. This is a great album, too. This was the most recent one up to that point. Nice, really cool box. Yeah. Several of these are RSD box sets. Here's a couple more. Um, this is a Light in the Attic box of the Sonics. It's called 50. And uh, yeah, man, it's got Sonic's Volume 3, the Sonic Boom. Um, here are the Sonics classics. This nice booklet. And a very cool poster of the Sonics. Yeah, I bought this probably 10 days after initial record store day at Lunchbox. I don't know. There were two or three of these left. I guess a lot of people just didn't want to pay uh, for the box, but it wasn't that expensive to me. The three out for three albums and these three albums in particular, and to be done by Light in the Attic. Come on, it's a no fucking brainer. Here's another uh, record store day release: uh, Flat Duo Jets, Wild Wild Love box. See, uh, I just talked about the Flat Duo Jets and my duos. Here's a nice booklet. Yeah, really cool. It's got this 10 inch in there. And then these two 12 inches. Um, and basically it's their first LP and then um, rarities and um, unreleased tracks that were on vinyl for the first time. Here's a, you know, show flyer. Yeah, well, the Flat Duo Jets. This might have been a regional RST release uh, because they're from North Carolina. Um, Yeah, they had some ties to Athens as well, but yeah. Dexter Ron Weber is in North Carolina currently. Okay, this is a, a special version of a single album. This is uh, Andrew Bird's Break It Yourself. Um, it's a box. It's got some... Um, Some cool photos and things, prints. Here's the uh, lyrics in our a box set with a poster. What? More posters. It's a very cool little illustration, and it's a uh, two LP set. Your C and D. the illustration that was on that poster on the inside of the box. Here's another deluxe edition pre-ordered box. This is uh, My Morning Jacket's Circuital. And yes, that is the proper way to pronounce it. It has this lenticular cover art on it. And then on the inside. So, when they first sent these, there was a defect on the vinyl. So they sent everybody that had pre-ordered it two more copies. By the time I had learned of the defect, 
which was immediate. I decided not to even listen to see if there was a defect and I just kept them. Um, I should probably listen for the defect now and uh, get rid of those if I don't want them. But yeah, it comes with this cool book. It's got lyrics and really cool photos of the band. Um, it came with this paper. You can plant this if you choose and water it. I chose not to. There's a uh, really cool band photo. And then the uh, this is the 2LP. Circuital. Not my um, favorite My Morning Jacket album, but it's a good album. Everybody knows this, Bruce Springsteen live. 7585. This is another RSD. Light in the Attic release of Heartworn Highways. Uh, this is the film, documentary film, on all the uh, singer songwriters the kind of more unsung singer-songwriters from Texas, obviously including Towns Van Zandt. I haven't even cracked this vinyl open. That's the DVD of the film, which I've already watched before I bought this. I haven't listened to the vinyl yet. I don't know why, but I have streamed that compilation quite a few times has this huge movie poster, theatrical movie release poster. Uh, and then of course this really cool book. Yeah, I love this thing. There's a light in the attic. Yeah, uh, another My Morning Jacket. This is a uh, Konakos. I don't know how you say that. I think that's it. Oconicos. But this was a uh, four LP live album. This was um, the Tour 4Z. This is the uh, one that came out on Badman. I believe there was, I don't remember what press this is. It's an earlier, it's one of the earlier presses, not first. But one of the, they, they reissued it a couple more times after this. That's one of my favorite, all time favorite live albums. That one, just killer. More live albums, let's do some more live albums. Fish, a live one. I like this, I like this. Um, I'm not a huge Fish fan, I've talked about them before. A lot of people hate Fish, I understand. Why? I completely understand why. <laughs> they hate them for some of the same reasons that I don't like them in particular. They're a certain section of their fan base. But um, this is a really good live album. It sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. right, now let's do another live one. This is Wilco's Kicking Television, live in Chicago from 2005. This was after A Ghost is Born, right before, not right before, but, you know, before uh, Sky Blue Sky. Um, I saw them on this tour, but not the show, or these these shows. Uh, I saw them in Charlotte, but I saw them on this, on this tour in 2005. One of, another one of my favorite live albums ever. And though I kind of prefer some of the arrangements that they worked out later of these songs. Poster. Four LPs. 
Yeah, this is one of those live sets that I would say, like, if you're even really not a fan of Wilco's studio output, but yet you're a fan of experimental art rock, you would love this album. Like, this live set, it is fantastic. This is not really a box set, it's just a box version of the album. Uh, this is And Nothing Hurt by Spiritualized. This was a, one of the special deluxe pre-orders you could get. Some Morse code on the front. This is the most recent album by Jason Pierce. As spiritualized. Very, very cool artwork. And then this with amazing photos. Some of them really remind me of like William Eggleston's stuff. There's the LP. Yeah, I really like this album. Um, but I'm a I'm I'm a spiritualized fan, so I like pretty much most everything that they've put out. So this one came in a bunch of records that were given to me. Uh, it's the American folk singers. And Ballad Ears. This was like a... When did this come out? I don't know. The 70s or the 60s. Might have been the 60s. But it's like a... Division of... It's like a... The Classics Record Library. It's like part of a... It says a division of Book of the Month Club. Yeah, this has everybody on it. Jim Baez, uh, Mike Seeger, the Weavers. Um, here's the booklet on the inside. Um, Odetta, Mississippi John Hurt, Carter Family, Lester Flat, Earl Scruggs, Doc Watson. It's got everybody. So it's a really cool box. Yeah, I'm happy to have it. Um, I've I've listened to it a couple times. Probably should listen to it more. All right, this is Bell and Sebastian's "How to Solve Our Human Problems." This is the box set version of. Uh, all these LP, all these EPs. It's like a series of EPs, three volumes. This is like a fold out, huge freaking poster. It's the band. And here's the like cover art. Bill and Sebastian, um, they they do shit like this all the time. These <laughs> these boxes uh, are really cool. Um, not really my favorite collection of their work. Some good songs on here. This may be something that I'll probably return to later in life and be like, you know, why didn't I like that when it came out? Oh boy, smile. The Beach Boys box set. Um, or the Beach Boys smile box set. No, this is not the one with the... Uh, there was a version of this that had a... Uh, if you pressed up here somewhere, it would turn on a little light in the shop. But no, this is just the shadow box version, the basic shadow box version. Which is really cool. So the photo of the boys on the inside. The track listing. I put the uh, piece that they usually tape to the back. I just put it on the inside. It kept coming off. So there's the um, the album. Well, at least what they could piece together of it. 
It's not really the complete album as was intended. It's a little bit more of a full version. There's a cool gatefold on the inside of the guys. Um, so this little book of photos. I mean, if you're a Beach Boys geek, I'm more of a Brian Wilson fanatic, less of a Beach Boys fanatic. Um, but this stuff's cool. This, this, this stuff from the from the early years is fucking great. Don't tell me. Is there? Is this another? What? Another poster in a box set? And there's this hardbound book. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was a masterful recording of Brian um, at his piano. There's a video of that on YouTube. Him doing Surf's Up. There's Van Dyke Parks. Yeah, just a cool, cool hardbound book. This fold out, which had CDs, was a trifold. That's CDs and uh, two seven inches, one of heroes and villains and vegetables. With surfs up, super, super, super cool box. All of those CDs have just a bunch of like outtakes, just stuff where they're just talking to each other in the studio. Hundreds and hundreds of tracks of stuff in this box. I haven't even come anywhere close to listening to it all. But yeah, here's another Bell and Spastric thing. This is the, uh, the Jeepster Singles uh, collection. All the individual singles that came out on Jeepster that were later released, re-released as a compilation. This is a DVD of video collection. Fan club flyers that the band would send out early in the, um, when they got started in the 90s. Uh, that's COVID-19 weird, right? Told you it might come up again. And then, uh, yeah, this cool booklet of like all this if you're an obsessed Bill and Sebastian fan, just all kinds of shit for you to geek out over, right? Um, yeah. Some cool photos. All right, so these are the, the singles, uh, the EPs. Um, this one's Dog on Wheels, the state, of, the state I Am In, String Bean Gene. This is 369 Seconds of Light. This is Legal Man. Judy is a dick slap. Bell and Sebastian seeing Jonathan David. I'm waking up to us. Uh, Lazy Line, Painter Jane, and then this Bell and Sebastian with, um, this is just a modern rock song. I Know Where the Summer Goes, um, The Gate, and Slow Graffiti. Bell and Sebastian, the Jeepster, Jeepster Singles Collection. All right, this is okay, not okay. Uh, it's hard to show in this lighting, in this room. Uh, okay, not okay, which is the box set uh, reissue of um, OK Computer from 1997 to 2017, so it's the 20, 20th anniversary edition. I already have a UK Press OG of this album, but I bought this just to have lift on vinyl just the song lift on vinyl which has always been one of my favorite 
um, rarities, uh, and I had it on it like I had an MP3 of it for years, and then they just they never put out an, a version of it and recorded an official recorded version of it. So I bought this simply just to have that. But it has this really cool hardbound book on the inside. Um, and it's just full of, uh, well, there's the, there's the LP. And then, you know, it's just a bunch of Stanley Donwood artwork. Really cool collage pieces. So many people that I knew when I was in school <laughs> ripped off his style. <laughs> of course, some people will say he ripped off maybe some other artists, but um, there's another LP and then the final EP. Uh, it's just really cool. It's hardbound, but it's got um, like it's some cushion to it. Uh, just a really, really, really cool book. And then on the inside, under that, you have a cassette. I don't even remember what's on this fucking cassette. <laughs> I don't remember, because I don't have a cassette player, so I couldn't have played it anyway. Here's a little book with um, lyrics, scribblings and stuff. And then this cool book, Lost Integrity. If found, please return. I love that. Just more scribblings and, uh, and some artwork. Um, yeah, a lot of the stuff was on their website for years. You know, um, it's just cool to have it in physical form. Okay, and then there was this uh, Velvet Underground Universal Music um, box set. It's seen a couple of different releases in different countries. Here's everything that's in it. Velvet Underground and Nico, and then Nico's solo album, and then White Light, White Heat, Velvet Underground, uh, the 1969 album, and uh, Loaded. And it comes with this uh, really cool booklet with lyrics and photos and stuff. When it was, when I purchased it, I was told online that it was limited edition but it's not um it's not numbered anywhere and uh so how do you really know on top of that all of these albums are really just uh reissues like you can say, i haven't even opened this one because um i already had this uh reissued and um i traded it in I, yeah, I don't know if it was really worth the money that I paid, but I'm happy to have this box. I, you know, why not? So when Hamilton came to Charlotte, we went to see it. And uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm not a big musical fan, but I, I thought this one was really cool. This particular company was really good. Uh, there was a lot of the understudies from the original cast. Uh, so I bought the box for for me and my wife. Um, my niece, who lives in Portland, is a big fan of this. And uh, spits it quite often. <laughs> Original Broadway cast recording, obviously. Yeah, it's four discs. Four more. The White Album. Beatles uh, and the Usher demos. Just listened to this the other day with uh, kids. Then I have this yet to be opened ultra step, ultra disc one step, 
um, of what's going on. The reason why I haven't, um, I don't even want to get into it really. I've, I've heard this, this, I've heard this version and it sounds really good, but it does kind of, this album in particular does kind of bother me being in a 2LP 45 RPM format because of the way the songs flow into one another, which is really important to me. So it kind of bothers me that it's broken up that way. And I'd much rather just listen to have a reissue uh, music on vinyl version of this album. I'd much rather just listen to it. And I'm kind of on the fence. This is the Ultra Disc One Step version of Blood on the Tracks. And this is amazing. It sounds amazing. You can hear Bob Dylan's shirt brush up against his guitar as he's playing. It's so, it sounds so amazing. I, I wish I had every single one of these. <laughs> and I'm not even a Yes fan. Um, and I was, al I almost bought Fragile. Just because of how good those things sound. I don't know, this is one of my favorite box sets that I have. And the reason is because what I've paid for it and what it goes for now and how um, sought after it is. But I, I bought this for $40, $45. And it's the uh, the GBV box, Guided by Voices box set. So this box has all of the early albums. And of all the albums, uh, this is the one to have it for. Propeller. Uh, so I was really stoked to find this copy. And the vinyl is in good good condition. Uh, the, the packaging is a little roughed up. And again, it's got that cutout on it. But um, I, <laughs> I was just, I was ecstatic when I found this. Um, I found it online. So um, all the stuff that I said in part one about the coronavirus and everything, uh, I meant, and I'm going to leave it in there and I don't care. But I also want to say to everybody that I hope you're doing well. I hope your family's doing well. Um, I really do hope that, um, I really do hope that we're better as a society after this. I I remember when 9-11 happened and how much we came together as a nation. And that was under a president who was, you know, fairly divisive, you know, had won an election that was very um, controversial. And um, that was kind of like the first, that was kind of where it started, uh, how divided we are, how everything is now not black and white, but red and blue. Um, but yet that as much as I really didn't care for that administration, I have a lot of respect for the way um, that he handled that at that time. And this is actually worse. Like this actually affects more people. It's global. Um, it's harder to prevent even than terrorist attacks. And um, the leadership in this country and some others is at best questionable. Uh, thank goodness that most of the governors of the states have handled this in the way that they've handled it. 
Um, but the leadership from the top has been atrocious. Uh, the guys, they just had a White House briefing today that said, and where President Trump said uh, that he was just going to open America back up for business. You know, we're in day eight of this 15 day pause to stop the spread. So in seven more days, he plans on just telling everybody, hey, just get back to it. And that's gonna be a, ma a major problem if it really does unfold like that. Because there's so many people that aren't getting tested and we know that there are people that carry this thing that are asymptomatic. That are asymptomatic. It's just going to cause another wave of it, in my opinion. I'm not a medical professional, but I just hope that enough of us will have pause uh, when that happens. Yeah, I'm not as scared for myself or my family, my children the science says are going to be fine. You know, actually last Monday we had a, our daycare emailed us late Monday night telling us that there was a possible COVID-19 exposure in our little girl's room, our one-year-old's room. And, uh, but Everything that the science has told me or had told me up to that point is that the effects on children, small children, the younger, the less affected they are by. Um, but I have some issues, some medical issues. Uh, and um, I think my wife would be fine. She's younger than me. She's not even 40 yet. Um, and uh, she, she, she turned 35 later this year. Um, but I have some things that it would, that would concern me if I caught it. But I'm not even as concerned about that. I'm just concerned about the general public, <laughs> you know, and what's the new normal going to be. You know, I, I do hope that this thing doesn't last as long as, as I fear it will. Um, but it's also, I believe, it's got to run its course. It's got to run its course. I just wish everybody the best. I hope you're all doing well. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know what else to say. I don't know how to end this. I'll be doing a video from Bill for his contest next. Um, that Actually, that would be the second video that I've done for Bill. Because this was for Bill and not a threat response. But anyway. Okay, so I'll talk to you guys later. Yeah. <laughs>